Well, after Prince Charles had the audacity to apparently call the plan to send migrants who cross the channel via dinghy to Rwanda appalling, he shouldn't be surprised that Rwanda has hit back. The High Commissioner, Johnston Busingi, said that migrants will be treated with safety, dignity and respect. He said that Rwanda would be, I quote, a safe haven. Well, in fact, Rwanda is no stranger to providing this sort of support. It helped the UNHCR, which is the UN's refugee agency, with its evacuation of Libya. Plus, over 130,000 refugees, including Afghans fleeing the Taliban, are being welcomed there. And the United Nations even rated it as the fastest improving in its index of good governance and human development. Now, I pointed out yesterday that Rwanda is far safer in terms of gun crime, murder and capital punishment than America. So why on earth are the UNHCR backing the legal action from charities and unions to stop Priti Patel's plan for sending migrants there? If the reason is LGBT rights, Rwanda is one of the few African countries that have agreed to the international conventions and continental frameworks that protect the human rights of all citizens, including the UN Declaration on Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity and the UN Report on Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity LGBT Populations. It's also a signatory to the 2011 United Nations Statement that condemns violence against LGBT people and has joined nine other African countries to support LGBT rights. Although same-sex marriage is banned and LGBT plus rights groups and homophobic attitudes are widespread there, here in the UK, same-sex marriage only became legal in 2014, and there are many who still hold homophobic views in this country. It's impossible to outlaw that. The Archbishop of Canterbury said that Boris Johnson's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda does not stand the judgment of God. Is this the same Church of England that still is failing in its recognition of same-sex marriage? Rwanda is breathtakingly beautiful and is a holiday destination for many Known as the land of a thousand hills, it is extremely biodiverse, with incredible wildlife living throughout its volcanoes, montane rainforests and sweeping plains. Frankly, it's stunning. The people are friendly and it is one of the most remarkable countries in the world. Travellers come from all over to see its gorillas. For me, those who are calling for this plan to be revoked have probably never been to Rwanda and are missing a vital point. Rwanda has changed. Yes, over a quarter of a century ago, there was a horrendous genocide, but Rwanda has evolved. I don't see why it should be haunted by the sins of its past. Over 131 migrants were set to be on the flight. The numbers have been reduced to 31, and today that's expected to be in single figures. It's a complete farce, and the people traffickers in the rest of the world know that. Prince Charles is due to visit Rwanda this month, and it is currently part of the Commonwealth. But after his alleged comments... I wonder for how long that will be. Because, to be honest, the last thing the monarchy needs is another reception like the one they got in Jamaica.